Hey y'all, and welcome back to the character creation course. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and today I'm going to show you how to quickly rig our character using the Rigify add-on. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is make sure we have the Rigify add-on enabled. To do that, go to Edit and then Preferences. Then click on Add-ons on the left and type Rig in the search bar. From there, you'll see Rigify. Click its checkbox to enable it, and you'll be good to go. Now that Rigify is enabled, we can add in our rig. Go ahead and hit Shift C to move the 3D cursor back to the world origin, which is the center of our character. Then 1 to look at it from the front, and hit Shift A to bring up the add menu. Since Rigify is enabled, we should see some new options under the armature section, namely the human meta rig and the basic human meta rig. There's also a basic quadruped rig if you were working with a quadruped. We're going to use the human meta rig because it comes with facial and finger bones, but if you don't want to use those, you can use the basic human rig. When you select the basic human rig, you can see the new rig get added in. And while that rig is selected, go to the object properties tab on the properties panel, then viewport display and turn on in front. This lets us see the bones on top of our character as we place them inside our character. Then scale the rig until the hips and shoulders roughly align with your character. Once they align, hit Ctrl A and apply the scale for your rig. Now if we check out the scaling, we can actually see that everything is set to 1, 1, 1 on the X, Y, and Z axes. If we don't do that, when we go to generate our rig later on in the video, the rig will get made weirdly, so make sure you apply the scaling. Now that our rig's created, let's hit Tab and go into Edit Mode on our meta rig. From there, go up to the top and turn on Symmetry for the rig. That's going to ensure that whatever transforms we make on the right will also happen mirrored on the left, so we only have to place half the bones. Now this only works for symmetrical characters, so if your character isn't symmetrical, then don't turn this option on, and sorry, but you have to place all your bones. Next, go ahead and change the transform pivot point up at the top to the active element. This is going to allow you to grab all of the bones in a chain and rotate by the last one, making it much easier to put the bones in position. So go ahead and bend the arms down roughly to where the bones would be in your character's arms and hands, and then let's work on the legs. Go ahead and move the bones into position as far as the front facing, and then go ahead and set the toe bones to line up with where the base of the toes would be on the boot, and just scale it out just a bit until the end of the bone is outside of the boot. That's just going to help get the rig to focus on that area a little bit better. Then go ahead and readjust the ankle and heel bones, and from here it's pretty much just set the bones where you think they would naturally go in the character. Make sure you keep some forward bend on the knees and elbows so the rig will generate the IK portions correctly, but in general, go ahead and place the bones where you think they would naturally go in your character's body, which means that for the spine you might want to keep that a little bit more towards the back of the character rather than trying to put it exactly in the center, and you might want to keep, you know, some of the bones uh, bent a little bit differently based off where your character's natural progressions would be. Now that our bones are placed, we need to make sure that the bones are going to bend in the correct direction when we pose them. To do that, we need to check the X, Y, and Z axis for each bone. And to do that, we need to go to the Object Data Properties panel, the green stick man, and then Viewport Display and turn on Axes, which will show us an X, Y, and Z axis for each bone. Which is great, but what does each axis mean? 
Well, the x-axis is the axis the bone is going to rotate on. The z-axis is the direction that the bone is going to bend towards. And the y-axis, which is currently hidden, but when I move the bone below it, you can see, is the direction the bone is facing. You can think of it as the twist direction for twisting your arm around. So if we go into pose mode by hitting control tab and rotate the bone on the x-axis, you can see that it rotates the bone on its x-axis and that it rotates towards the z-axis. Now, if you didn't get the same reaction that I did, make sure that your transform orientation is set to normal mode up at the top there so that the rotations will use the bones x, y, and z axis. Now the main reason we're checking all the roll directions is because we spent a lot of time in the hand area, and we need to make sure that our fingers are going to bend in the right direction. You can test each finger bone by selecting it in pose mode and rotating it on that bone's x-axis and seeing how it moves. If it doesn't move the way you want, you can hit tab to go back into edit mode, select the roll bone tool on the left, and then click and drag to roll the bone's axes into a better position. Then go back to pose mode and move it again just to make sure you're happy with it. Once you're happy with how all of the bones will move, go back into pose mode, select everything, and hit Alt-R to remove all rotations. And now we can work on the sword bones. Now that our bones are rolled and positioned correctly, let's go back to object mode and bring in our sword and scabbard accessories. Go ahead and select either the sword or scabbard, and then go to the object properties panel, viewport display, and then turn on the axes. This will give us the objects X, Y, and Z axis, so that way we can align the bones axes with the swords axes. Then go back into edit mode on the meta rig and turn off symmetry at the top, since we're adding in non-symmetrical bones. Then select the thigh bone next to the sword and hit shift D to duplicate it and move it and align it with the sword. Now that we've created the bone, we need to adjust some settings so that Rigify generates some controls for us when it generates the rig. The first thing we need to do is change the bone name from thigh R01 to sword by going to the bone properties tab and changing the name at the top. Then hit control tab and go to the pose mode and scroll down on the bone properties tab until you get to the Rigify type. Then change the rig type to basic super copy. That process is also how you add other bones, like hair bones or a tail. Just duplicate the bones you need, adjust their rig type in pose mode, and make sure they're parented correctly, and Rigify will create the rig controls as necessary. Now that everything is added in, let's go ahead and generate the rig. Just go back to object mode, select the meta rig, and scroll down on the object data properties tab to the Rigify button section and hit generate rig. This can take a couple of seconds to a minute depending on your computer, but it'll quickly generate a rig over top of your meta rig. Now, even though the rig has been generated, we can still see the meta rig. That's just in case you need to fix your meta rig and regenerate a rig really quickly. You don't have to, you know, create it again but you can hide it if you don't want to see it. Now, just go ahead and in the outliner, control select all of the objects that are going to be parented to the rig. And some of those objects are already parented to the rig as we can see, but we will parent them again with automatic weights so that our rig actually deforms those objects. Once you've selected all those objects, select the rig and hit control P and choose parent with automatic weights. Now that the weights are applied, let's hide our meta rig. Go into pose mode on the rig and we can play around a little bit. Now some things that we can see are weird, like the sword and scabbard definitely shouldn't be bending, but don't worry about that, we'll fix the weight painting in the next video. The Rigify rig comes in two types, an IK rig and an FK rig, and if you want to know the difference between them, you can do a quick search, this is not what this video is about, but just know that you have both options when you're working with the Rigify rig. But I'm going to be using the IK rig because it allows me to just work with the feet, hands, hips, and essentially head area, and to control the entire body. And because I'm going to be working with an IK rig, I can go into the viewport properties panel and turn off the FK rig layers so that way I don't see those controls. Alright y'all, that's the video. Thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, hit that like button. It really helps feed the algorithm beast and promote this video. And if you want to see the next part in the series, go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell to make sure that you get the notification for when we do the weight painting video to fix all of this ridiculousness. I'm Sir Pinkbeard. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.